Welcome to EC Elimu Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed the mirror formula that is 1 over f is equals to 1 over v plus 1 over u. In this case, f is the focal length of the mirror that we are using, v is the image distance, and u is the object distance. We also discussed that you can use this formula to determine the nature of the image being formed. Now, in this lesson, we are going to use a graphical method to determine the position of the image, the position of the object, and the focal length of the mirror that you are going to use. And then you can use this graphical analysis to determine the nature of the image that is formed. My name is Albert. I hope you are going to enjoy this lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to draw and analyze a graph of the reciprocal of the object distance against the reciprocal of the image distance. After that, you are going to use this graph to determine the focal range and the radius of curvature of either a concave mirror or a convex mirror. So the first graph that you are going to draw and analyze is a graph of the reciprocal of the object distance versus the reciprocal of the image distance that is 1 over b. And in this case, for a concave mirror, we are going to realize that the graph is a straight line graph with a negative gradient. So in this case, it means a straight line graph, it obeys a linear equation from your mathematics, that is y is equal to mx plus c, where y is going to be the value that we plot on the y-axis, m is going to be the gradient, x is going to be the value that we plot on the x-axis, and then c is going to be the y-intercept. Again, the graph or the gradient of this graph is going to have a negative gradient, and in this case, it's going to be negative 1. Now, the negative implies that the image is inverted. Remember from the ray diagrams, we realize that the image formed by a concave mirror is always inverted unless it's in between f and p. So here, the negative gradient that we're going to obtain is going to imply that the image is inverted relative to the object. And on further analysis, we're going to discover that the reciprocal of the y-intercept represents the focal length of the mirror. So if you are going to get where the line of that graph cuts the y-axis, we take one of that point, it's going to give us the focal length of that mirror. So if I can sketch a graph for this one, then this graph will look like this. This graph will have a face like this one here. So in this case, we have the x-axis, we have the y-axis, then when you, when you are drawing your graph, make sure you label the axis. This is going to be 1 over u per centimeter. Remember to include units. Then this is going to be 1 over v per centimeter. Then this is the origin O. Then now this graph is going to look like this, a straight line graph. A straight line graph with... A negative gradient. Remember a graph which runs from upper right to the upper left to the lower right is a negative gradient. So this one change in y over change in x gradient is going to be a change in y over change in x, which is going to be negative one. And this negative now will imply that the, the image which is formed is inverted. Now on further analysis of this graph, what we have said. This y-intercept is going to represent y-intercept. Intercept is going to represent uh, one over the focal length of this mirror. And then, if we if if we can do that, or if we can prove that using the from the mirror formula, then one over f is equal to one over v plus one over u. That is from the mirror formula. And now, if we draw this, or if we write this. Uh, equation so that it, it lies in the Asaline equation, that is y is equal to mx plus c. In this case, we will place what we have in the y-axis, that is 1 over u, on one side. If we have to place what we have in the y-axis on one side, it means we will remain with 1 over u on one side, and we will take 1 over v in one side with 1 over f. If we do that here, we will remain with 1 over u, is equals to, when we take 1 over v, the other side, it becomes a negative, negative 1 over v. 
then plus 1 over f. In this case, this 1 over u is in the y-axis, 1 over v is in the x-axis, then this negative is going to be the negative gradient because I've told you it will be a negative gradient. Then now y-intercept, look at the y-intercept c, c is going to be 1 over f. So this 1 over f is going to be uh, c, that is, and here in this case c is the y-intercept. So if we are going to get 1 over f of what we get in this y-intercept, we are going to get the focal length of this mirror. So we are going to draw a one graph so that we use these ideas and find the focal length of a mirror. So the first question, a concave mirror and an illuminated object are used to produce a sharp image of an object on a screen. The object distance and the image distance are as given below. Complete the table and then plot a graph of 1 over u against 1 over v and from the graph determine the focal length of the mirror. So in this case what we need, if we are given 1 over, we are given u and we are given v, then we have to find 1 over u in per centimeter, then we find 1 over v per centimeter also, that is 1 over focal length of, of our image distance and 1 over object distance. Like in this first case, we are given u, then we find the reciprocal of u by, u by just inserting in the calculator 1 over 80, which will give us a 0 .0 0 0.0125, 0, 0, 0 point, let me write using this other ink, 0 0.01250. Zero for significant figures. The second one is going to give us 0 0.03745. Then the third one is going to give us 0 0.04464. The fourth one is going to give us 0 0.04854854. Then the last one is going to give us 0 0.5. 102. Then 1 over um, 1 over v is going to give us the first one is 0. Point, we are going to divide 1 divided by 20. It's going to give us 0. 0.05. Then the second one is 0. 0.0250. 0. Then the third one, remember here, if you use three significant figure, then you will go with three significant throughout. Then the other one is 0. 0.0179. Then the other one is 0 0.01388889. All eight nine. And then the last one is 0 0.0113. Uh, six. Then now in this case, what you do, you will plot your graph of 1 over V against uh, 1 over U against 1 over V. Like in this case, if you draw your y-axis here, this is your y-axis, then you draw your x-axis here, your x-axis to go like that, in such a way that this is x and this is y-axis. Then now from this one, you label your axis. Here we're going to have 1 over u per centimeter, very important to label that. Then here we're going to have 1 over v per centimeter, like that. But now, are we able to plot all these values the way they appear here? No. So what we are going to do, we are going to write these values in standard form. Like in this case, for 1 over u, for 1 over u per centimeter, like the first value we have as 0 0.01. 250. Then now for, for us to write so that it can fit a scale, we are going to move ahead by 1, 2, 3, 3 decimal points so that it becomes 12.50 times 10 raised to power negative 3 per centimeter. So in this case, if we change like that, we will also raise this one per negative 3, the 1, 1 over V. So here we are going to have it then you have to show on this graph that you changed it or you raised to power negative 3. So you will say times 10 raised to power 
negative 3 then here in the x axis also times 10 raised to power negative 3 this is very important to indicate that so that whatever, whatever you are going to read on this graph you must raise it to a power of negative 3 then now what you do the first the first values here now we have to write them when they are in standard form the first one here will be 12 point five the second one is going to be thirty seven point four five the third one is forty four point six four the other one is forty six forty eight i mean forty eight forty eight point five four then the last one is fifty one point zero two but remember this one i'll times 10 raised to power negative 3. Then the other one here, the other one down here, it will be 1 over V. The first one, if we multiply by 10 raised to power negative 3, so it's going to be 50. Then the, the other one will be 25. The other one will be 17.9. The other one will be 13.89. Then this one will be 11.36. Now from here, we are going to use this, these values that we have raised to power negative 3 to find a, a good scale that we are going to use to draw this graph. Like in this case, we can say 1 centimeter represents uh, 10 per centimeter. 1 centimeter represents 10 per centimeter. So here, if this one becomes now our 0, at this point here, this is 0. Let me use the... the this is 0, then this is going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, and then this is 50. Then in the y-axis also, this is going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, then 60, 70. Also, we can proceed as 60. So here, if you read 10, then you are going to multiply by times 10 raised to the power negative 3. And now, for us to plot these values in this graph then now we will start with the one on the x-axis this is where we have the x-axis and this is the y-axis so in the x-axis one over v we are going to start with 50. so where we have 50 here we have 50 here at this point then at 50 we have 12. remember inside this one centimeter there are 10 boxes so it means one box represents one so here, where we have 50, in the y-axis, we will have 12.5. So we will have it at this point here. You plot it with a mark like that. Then where we have 25 in the x-axis, 25 is here at the middle. This is 25, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So where we have 25 here, then the other one in the x, in the y axis we have that 7.5 so you will move up up to 30 that 1 that 2 that 3 that 4 that 5 that 6 that 7 so you will make that 7.5 there so in this case that 7.5 is going to be somewhere there then now the other one we have is 17.9 that is almost 18 this is 10 17 is here then 18 is somewhere here then now in the corresponding y-axis we have uh, 44.6 so we'll move up to where we have 40 this is 40 then this is 41 42 43 44.6 is somewhere here. Then when we have 13.89, this is 10. 13 is just here. Then in the y-axis, we have 48.84. We will move up to 48.84, where we will have it at this point there. Then the last one, we have 11 in the x-axis. 11 is just here. Then we have in the y axis 51.2 so in this case we will go to 50 where we have 11 50 51.2 is just somewhere there so from this point now 
you will draw your line joining where the, the most li most points lie. So in this case, you will come to these points which you have plotted. Now, where most of them lie, that's where you are going to make your line. Like in this case, most of my points have lied on this point here. Then I have to draw my line. I will draw my line here. Like that. So my line I've drawn such that we have at least three points passing through uh, that line. So in this case, uh, that is how our graph will look like. Then now we do what we call uh, analysis of this graph. For us to find the focal length, we said we look at the a point where this line cuts the y axis. So it cuts the y axis here. This is the y intercept. This is the y intercept. So where it cuts the y axis is going to be 1 over f. So in this case, it cuts the y axis at, this is 50, this is 60, 61, 62. It cuts the y axis, the y intercept is at 62. So 62, but it's multiplied by this value that here, times 10 raised to power, times 10 raised to power negative 3. Then now from this point, this is per centimeter like that then now for us now to say we said y intercept is equals to one of or uh, not not it's equals to one over f so now for us to get f then we have to find the reciprocal of this one so for us to get now what the, the f itself the focal length focal length f we are going to get one divided by the reciprocal of the y intercept 62 point times 10 raised to power negative 3. So in this case, it is going to give us, if we calculate that, this is the same as uh, 1 divided by, if we move back, it will be 0 point, uh, 0 0.062. 1 divided by 0 0.062. 0.62 is going to be divided by 0.062 is going to be 16. So here we're going to get our focal length as 16.12 centimeter. So our focal length here, which we have obtained from the graph by finding the reciprocal of the y-intercept is 16. Point one two centimeter so this is our f and if you draw this graph i am very sure you will get exactly that so that marks the end of our lesson today in the next lesson we will discuss a graph of uv versus u plus v